This is one of the smallest retro gaming setups you can build right now. It's compact, it's affordable and honestly pretty underrated. Most people look at the Raspberry Pi 4 and think small hobby board, but this thing can actually become an excellent little retro console if you set it up right. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to turn it into a clean, fast, simple retro gaming machine using Batocera. Hey, what's going on everybody? Badger DOI back here again. And today we're taking a look at the Raspberry Pi 4 and we're going to turn it into a complete retro gaming setup using Batocera. Now the Pi 4 can do a lot of things. You can turn it into a network wide ad blocker with Pi Hole run small servers or even try an Android TV build. But for this video, we're focusing on retro gaming and realistically, the Pi 4 can run everything up to PS1, Dreamcast, N64 and even PSP with the right configuration. Plus, you still get access to YouTube, RGSX and even Kodi for media playback. So with that being said, Let's get started. Before we jump into installation, let's quickly go over the specs of this little board. The Raspberry Pi 4 comes with quad-core ARM Cortex-A72 CPU clocked at 1.5 GHz and in this case I'm using the 4 gigs of RAM model. You got dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0 and Gigabit Ethernet if you prefer to run this wired. On the side you'll find the two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports and two micro HDMI outputs capable of the 4K at 60fps, although for Batocera we usually output at 1080p. Storage uses a micro SD card and power is delivered through a USB-C port, usually 5 volts at 3 amps. It's not the most powerful thing in the world, but for retro gaming it's absolutely enough. If you're enjoying this so far, don't forget to drop a like and maybe consider subscribing. It helps the channel grow and lets me make more content like this. To get everything ready, you'll need a few things. A Raspberry Pi 4, you can use the 2 gigs model, but I recommend 4 gigs for smoother performance. Micro SD card, I'm using a 256 gigs SanDisk. A keyboard and mouse, this will be very useful later for installing apps and navigating menus. A controller, I'm using the EZSMX X05, but pretty much anything works. If you want better cooling, you can also use a Pi case with a fan or even a passive heatsink, but this is optional. The Pi gets warm under load, but Batocera usually handles it well. Next, let's install Batocera. Go to the official website, batocera.org, head over to the download section and look for the Raspberry Pi 4 build. Download the latest version, usually the most recent one is the best. To flash it, we'll use Balena Etcher. Simply just open Etcher, select the Batocera image, choose your SD card and click flash. Depending on your SD card speed, this can take a few minutes. And once it's done, safely eject your card, plug it into your Raspberry Pi and let's move to the first boot. On the first boot, Batocera will take a moment to resize the partitions and get everything ready. This is normal, just let it run. Once it loads into the main menu, the first thing I always do is to set up my controller. Just press and hold the button and go through the mapping process. From here make sure to connect to Wi-Fi, set up your scraper accounts and choose a team. And later on, add your BIOS files. Obviously, I can't share BIOS files here, but they are quite easy to find. I'm planning to set up a Discord or Telegram next year, so you guys have a place to ask questions. Once that's done, I'll simply announce it. Let's go ahead and add RGSX, which is a great app to access cloud and web services on Batocera. On your PC, go to the official GitHub page, I'll have it linked in the description and in a pinned comment. Download the zip file and extract it. Open File Explorer and type Batocera. Enter username root, password Linux. Head to Share Roams, Ports, 
drop the rgsx folder into that directory now go back to your pi launch rgsx from the port section you will have to go through the first time setup pair your controller and you are pretty much good to go One thing I really want to test on this build is the unofficial Batocera add-ons package. It's changed a lot since the last time I tried it. Much better interface, better layout and tons of useful extras. To install it, press F1 on your keyboard. Go to Applications. Open Xterm. Paste the command I'll leave in a pinned comment. It will install everything automatically. Once it's done, close the windows, head to your ports menu and you'll see the new add-ons entry there. Inside you'll find all kinds of things you can install, web browsers, tools, utilities and more. I installed Firefox on this build, but there are many more things you can explore depending on what you want to do. We might cover more of these add-ons in a future video. Of course, this little device isn't only for gaming. If you like watching movies or TV shows, Batocera includes Kodi right out of the box. I connect it to my Jellyfin server and everything works perfectly. Navigation is smooth, video playback is smooth, and using an air mouse remote makes everything even easier. If you're using Raspberry Pi as a tiny living room media machine, this setup is actually pretty great. Now, YouTube works well too. It's a clean interface, responsive controls and smooth playback at 1080p. Obviously, I tried to push it a bit higher here, so that's why we see some input lag. It honestly makes the Pi double as a little media streamer for when you're not gaming. But let's move over to what we built this for. It is retro gaming. PlayStation 1 performs perfectly on the Raspberry Pi 4. Crash Bandicoot loads instantly and I'm keeping everything as default settings. It is a smooth frame rate, responsive controls with no issues. Now, PSP can be more demanding, but titles like God of War run well enough. Obviously, you can go do some tweaks to have a better performance, but I left everything as default. But games like Burnout Legends or Daxter run pretty well. And of course, classics like Super Mario Bros. run flawlessly. This light system barely stresses the Pi at all and you'll have a great time revisiting your favorites.
You can also expect solid performance on Mega Drive, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, MAME, Dreamcast, N64 with some tweaks. So overall, this tiny build actually performs really well. Now, a lot of people ask, is the Raspberry Pi 4 still worth building in 2025? And honestly, yes, it's cheap, low power, silent, and if you pair it with Batocera, it becomes a clean plug and play retro system. You don't need a huge PC build, you don't need a GPU, you don't need a powerful hardware. Especially if your goal is to enjoy retro games up to PSP and Dreamcast, the Pi handle it just fine. And that's pretty much it for this build. The Raspberry Pi 4 makes a great little retro gaming console, and Batocera makes the whole process super easy. If you enjoyed this build, make sure to hit like, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments what do you think about this build. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.